Hi, and welcome back to another painting, Brush Tips with Sherry. Today we're actually going to be painting a peacock. This is one of my favorite paintings. This is full of color and creativity, and we also get to add a little bit of pizzazz with some special colors. Gold, we're gonna add a little gold in there, a little metallic. So let's get started. We are going on a big canvas today because I love this painting that much that it deserves a big canvas. So here's our colors for today. We're gonna be using phthalo blue, purple, bright red, yellow, gold, black, white, and I forgot the phthalo green on my pa palette. So let's just add that there. All right, perfect. All right, so we also have our cup with our brushes. And remember, we don't get fancy here. We don't need to be fancy. No reason at all. We need to be creative. So we just have a plastic cup here with some basic brushes. We have a big one inch one here. We have a little tri triangle, triangle-ish detail brush, a round detail brush, and then a fine detail brush. And I like to keep those all inside water. Um, that way, my paint stays wet and it covers my canvas the way that I need it to. All right, so let's get started. We are actually going to start out with some blues. So if you like purple better, start out with purple, but we wanna start out with the darker colors first. And don't be afraid to mix them. Remember, we wanna be sloppy. We wanna be creative. And then all you start to do is just add real quick strokes, really, really fast, okay? I don't want you concentrating too much on one area because if you do, this is what's gonna happen. And then you're gonna get stuck on that one feather. So I want you to just keep moving, okay? Always be moving your brush. Now I love to fill the background first and scoop up that paint, like that big bowl of cereal. Remember we talked about that before? I always reference that because you know my favorite cereal, Lucky Charms. My husband laughs because I'll eat Lucky Charms for dinner. But then that leads him to eat his favorite cereal for dinner, so. Maybe he shouldn't laugh. Maybe he should just enjoy the meal that he's getting. Just kidding. All right, I'm adding some green, some purple, and I just keep moving, just keep moving. I have all that, now I have that song stuck in my head, just keep swimming. Oh, that'll be my earworm for today. Now, if you want, you can take your brush and start to go like this throughout some of these bigger feathers to make some bigger feathers up here and just keep working your way down. There's a lot of layers in this painting. And as we build the layers, we want to um, let these areas dry. So it's okay if you just start it out and build these layers up here and then work your way back down over here, okay? And you can see that when you mix the purple with the blue and the green and all that together, you get this nice texture colored paint. It's not texture colored paint, but you know what I'm saying. Different colored paint. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I was thinking texture. I want texture, that's why I wanna build. All right. Going, keep going, keep going. I feel like I'm moving super fast. I'll slow down. We're not in any hurry. So I want you to take your time. I want you to relax. I want you to watch how I'm painting. And I want you to put your own little creative 
thickness in with it, okay? And don't be scared. Don't be scared of the paint. I know a lot of people get real nervous to, that they're going to put too much paint on. There's never too much paint, okay? So don't be nervous. Just keep painting. Keep moving this paint all around. Mix your colors. Get the different colors in there. I just mixed a little bit of yellow in just to see what happens, just because I want to experiment, just play around. Don't forget about your sides and your tops. Show you. Top right there, side right there. So that way when we hang it up on a wall, all of our sides are going to be covered if you choose not to frame it. They are pretty inexpensive to frame, so if you do ever want to frame a painting, um, you could definitely message me and I could tell you where the best places are. You could follow us on Facebook or check out our web page. We have all kinds of great information there. If you ever need advice on painting, even if it's not one of our paintings, please feel free to message me. I love sharing ideas with everybody. This isn't just my talent, this is everybody's talent, and I want to share it with you. So be sure to check us out on Facebook. I always say us because I consider us like a big family. We're a big artist family here. We are a big paint family. You are all included in this. And just keep building. Just keep playing with your painting and trust the process. I know sometimes people get a little nervous, even when I'm teaching, people get a little nervous and they'll say, oh, it's not looking good, it's not looking good, but really just trust the process. Fill this whole background here. I'm loving the blue mixed with the green with this nice turquoise color that is a really, really popular color right now especially with spring coming. Now remember last week what we did, we, we actually put our easel or our canvas up on the back of our easel just to hit the bottom there, okay? Now, if you're a little on the shorter side like some people, me. You can always put your canvas like this and then that's going to help you reach the sides a little bit better or the top and the bottom a little bit better. So don't be afraid to do this. Any way that you can turn your painting around to get the, the sides all covered, definitely do that. Okay. Whoop, don't drop it though like I just did. All right, there we go. Perfect. All right, so we're just going to let this sit up here a second and dry. Now, you guys at home, you could walk away, you could get a snack, you could check your Facebook page. Me, I cannot. So I'm just going to stand here and blow on it. I'm just kidding. I'm not, I'm not going to stand here and blow on it. Oh my gosh, I would be lightheaded. I would pass out. That would be bad. That would be like live fainting, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, why will you dry? Okay, I have to tell everybody this. So last night I'm scrolling through Facebook. I'm going through Facebook and I'm always like, we'll lay down in bed or whatever and we'll check our social media one last time. So I'm looking and I see this joke on there and I was dying laughing. I was laughing all morning about this joke, okay? So I'm going to tell you this joke. So it had a little picture of a hamster, which made no sense to me. But it said, why do you not run with bagpipes? Because you'll get killed. Do you get it? Okay, I've been laughing about that all morning, all morning. 
Oh my goodness. It was, it's like the funniest joke, but it's so good. <laughs> it's just a good joke. All right. So mine is pretty dry. Um, I'm not going to push too hard on the paint that isn't dry. If yours isn't dry, just let it dry. Pause me, let it dry, and come back in a little bit, okay? If you're painting along, just don't run over the wet paint too much, okay? So let's clean off our brushes really, really good. And then I want you to get creative. We're going to scoop up some of this red and some of this purple, okay? All you're going to do is just start throwing it in there, okay? Every which way. Just keep scooping it up. Add it in there. I love the red. I think the red makes it pop. I think it brings out a lot of color and creativity in the painting. Big globs, quick, quick, fast. Just keep moving. Grab some of that white. Add some white in there. Just keep moving. You can even grab some purple, some green, mix those kind of together. If you could see my paint palette, it is crazy full. Just keep adding. Just keep building those layers. Don't be scared of the paint. Probably be scared of running with bagpipes though. <laughs> That's still like the best joke. I might have to look up jokes and then we could just tell jokes on this show too. Painting and jokes. And we'll get some coffee and some donuts and we'll have painting, donuts, and jokes and coffee. I'm just kidding. Maybe, I'm just kidding. All right, and make sure you go all the way to the bottom here. Just keep painting. And we're gonna add the head in here, so don't freak out if like this area here isn't perfect, okay? Don't freak out if that area isn't perfect. Just keep going and keep adding, okay? Grab more white, throw some more white in there. Grab some green, throw some more green in there. Don't be afraid to mix it up. Throw some purple over the red. It makes a really, really pretty purple. Now I am out of blue because I've mixed it with everything else. So I'm actually just gonna grab some more of this phthalo blue here. Now I love to use these bottles because then I don't have to constantly be filling I just buy them and then I fill, I buy big half gallon ones and then I fill these little guys. Then I can keep those stored in the back and just keep these visible. And they travel nicely too. You could go to the park with these, you could stick them in a nice little container and take an easel and canvas to the park and go do some art in the park. I do art in the park. I like to paint outside in the summer. We actually have a nice little pool in our backyard. Just a little baby pool. It's not a baby pool, it's just a little guy, but it's cute. It works for us. And uh, the kids will go swimming and I'll just hang out and paint and do what I have to do. All right. So if you take a step back and just look at your painting, you'll be able to tell like where you want to add some more feathers and always, your painting looks totally different when you're standing back. So don't ever be afraid to get up and take a step back. Admire it, look around where you want to add more things to it, and then kind of come back to it and just play around. Don't be afraid. You cannot add too many feathers here, okay? Let's add some more yellow up here. Some yellow here, yellow here, how about here? 
Look at how awesome this guy is turning out. I love birds. Birds are probably one of my favorite animals just because they're sweet, chirping in the morning. And now we're hearing all kinds coming out. And the tree frogs too, where I live, there's so many tree frogs, which I love. All right, I'm gonna clean off my brush here. And we're gonna go into the head. Now the face part is egg shaped. Okay, so I'm still gonna use this big guy. I got this big guy here. The face part is egg shaped. So remember how I tell you, whenever you're making a circle, so we're just gonna make an oval, but we aren't gonna to touch our canvas yet. Just keep going. And then once you feel like you have a good oval shape going, go ahead and touch your canvas, okay? Now, we want this to be super smooth. And then we're gonna bring the body down and the body almost looks like a bowling pin, okay? And we're just gonna color that all the way in. Whoops, not with green. I grabbed green, not blue. And just keep going. Now, of course, I want you to let this dry in between here. I can't, but you can. And just keep building, keep smoothing it out. You see I'm not lifting up my brush halfway through, just going all the way down. It's like a big S, okay? And then here's the head. Kind of smooth it all out along the back sides. Okay? Now I am going to switch to that little crazy triangle-ish looking brush that we were talking about just because I need it to be able to control some of the beak part and the little hair part on it, okay? So my gold has now mixed in with my yellow, so I am actually going to add a little dab of yellow over here. My little guy comes to the studio and he helps me fill all the paints. And that's fun. That's his job. And the other day I said, are you going to come work for me at the studio? He's like, that is my job, Mom. That's where I work. He's five. All right, so quick lift. Touch, swipe, but lift it right at the end, okay? We want to keep those all together. My paint is super wet up there, so we'll let that area dry for a second, and I'm just going to come in with the beak. I'm going to mix a little yellow with my white just so it's not so transparent and then I'll build from there, okay? So the beak goes out and down and then back in. Do we see how we did that right there? I know it's hard to see with the shiny paint. That's all we did right there, okay? And I just want this to be dry. Maybe we'll find a good peacock joke for next week. And I'm really, really lightly just bringing some of this yellow into the head. Super light. Don't feel like you have to add a ton. We just want to make it pop a little bit, okay? Just little highlights. Cleaning off my brush again. Get all that yellow out of there. We're going to let that beak dry. We're going to grab some black. We're just going to start the outline of the eye. The outline of the eye is an almond shape. So if you make an almond shape, then you'll have your eyeball. And just fill that in. Okay. There you go. And there's your peacock's eye. It's kind of hard to see with the lighting, huh? I'm also going to take some of this black and just run it down the body also. We're also going to do that with white. Okay. 
Now, I'm going to take this round detail brush here, the medium one, not the real, real tiny one, this round little one here, and I am going to add a little gold in with this yellow. I want to have a little bit of a darker beak, so I let that first layer dry. I just want to add another little layer in there. Okay. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to let it dry here. Sometimes I have to balance my finger, messing up the peacock's beak. Don't want to do that. And look, there's yellow right behind it. So I'm definitely going to have to highlight this beak a little bit more. But let's do the fanning. Let's do the fanning. I should bring a big fan in here and then my hair will be blowing everywhere. It'll be crazy. It'll be like Baywatch, but painting. see. All right, keep going. Do you guys hear it? I can hear the fanning. Hopefully we don't have to do this too much more. But it does create a nice flow of air. All right, perfect. Perfect, perfect. Let's grab that little pointed round brush again. Okay, this one right here. Perfect. And let's just go back in and add some more of that golden yellow around the beak. Okay. Then we are going to add more here. Now those little feathers at the top of our peacock's head, black, with blue. Just mix that black and blue up. And then all it is is a little dab with the brush. Okay. See that? See how we did that? Now again, at any time you could shoot me a message and ask me some tips on how to get these guys. I feel like that's a really confusing part to some people, but it's super easy. All right, let's take this round brush again. Let's add a little dot to the eyeball. Let's bring this peacock to life, okay? As soon as you start to add the little details in around the face, it really highlights your peacock and brings him or her. Let's give him some facial feathers to life, okay? If you want, you can add some here. Just blend that in. Add these cute little highlights in here. Just give your peacock some facial structure. Then he doesn't get lost in his feathers. Also here, make this guy come down here. Bring this guy over here, and this guy here. Now I like to add a couple little details around his face and body. Just some embellishments. Just a couple little dots, maybe a couple little squiggles. Okay. Couple little dots here. And remember, if you can't get that perfect dot, remember what you can do. You can hit the bottom with your brush. Okay, so you just dip it in to your paint and then you can just add a little dot. Okay, don't be afraid to use the bottom of your brush if you want it to be a perfect round circle. Add some nice little embellishments over here, bring some embellishments here. Look at how this is going. And then we're going to add our finishing touches. What we are going to do is add that little black dot inside the nose. Now that it's dry, add that there. Add a little highlight here to the nose, to the beak, I should say. It's not a nose. 
Add some of that there. All right, now we're going to come in with the gold and then we're done. Let's clean off that big brush again. Rinse it off really, really good. Get all that blue out of there. Then all we're going to do is grab some of this gold and watch. Bam, bam. Look at fancy, fancy, fancy. And that's why I want you to say every time you touch your canvas with this gold. Fancy, fancy, fancy. Look at that. Look at how that just added so much life to your peacock. This is why this is one of my favorite paintings. Now you can use silver, you can use just plain white, whatever you want to use to make this peacock come to life. Don't be scared to do that though. Make sure you are just adding it wherever you want. Just scoop up good amounts like our Lucky Charm cereal and just add it in there. Look at that. Look at how amazing this is looking. I bet yours is amazing too and I cannot wait to see it. Make sure you send me pictures if you are finished. If you paint it along with me, send me pictures. Post them in the, in the uh, Facebook pages and just let us know how it turned out. So thank you again for watching and next week we will be on at the same time again. So stay tuned.